Okay, so um, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit has laid something on my heart, and I really feel like I'm supposed to share it with all of you. And it's probably not going to be very popular, but I don't care. I'm not here to impress man. I'm here to impress God and make God happy. Um, the other night while leaving church, um, I got in my car and I cried. And I don't do that a lot. And it wasn't because I was sad, so to speak. It was because I was really angry. Um, I had a couple situations where I, a couple of the kids came up to me and, and made mention and just said, you know, Miss Sarah, does God love transgender people? And I said, well, of course he does. God loves everybody. And uh, the individual child continued on and said, well, I think I'm transgender. And I said to them, I said, no, you're not. You have all the right parts, and God created you this gender, and that's what you are. I said, don't listen to those lies. And we proceeded to talk a little bit, and I just explained to them, I said, you know, God is God. God doesn't change his mind. God created man and God created woman. And that's that. And these are lies that you're being fed. And then I had another child hear the conversation and they told me about a, a sibling of theirs that was dealing with the same thing. And then we talked about um, lesbianism, homosexuality, those types of things. And I just told them, the truth. I said, you know, God says that it's sin. And these kids are hearing this stuff day in and day out. They're inundated with it. And nobody, and I'm, I'm going to pick on the Christians right now, the Christians are not standing up to this topic and this subject. Now, let me be very frank with you with love that I say this. Sin is sin. Whatever it is, it's sin. Whether you choose to lie or you choose to uh, have fornication or you choose to get drunk, sin is sin. So I'm not picking on gays, lesbians, transgender people. I'm not doing that. I'm simply telling you that these children are being fed lies from the enemy. And quite frankly, I'm sick and tired of it. And I heard the Holy Spirit say to me this morning when I got up, you're gonna address this today. You're gonna talk about this today. And you're not gonna apologize about it. It's time that as Christians and leaders in the church, that we stand up to the lies of the enemy and tell him to back off in the name of Jesus Christ. So let me read some verses to you that specifically God gave me this morning. And I've read these verses many, many, many times. But as parents, you need to be concerned about what your kids are hearing day in and day out. What they're being fed day in and day out. And know that when they're being told a lie, sit them down and tell them it is not God's word, it is not truth, and it is a lie from Satan himself. Satan is a liar, and he is there to steal, kill, and destroy you and your kids and your families and the whole world if he gets his way. There is a true thing called spiritual warfare, and you may not be able to see it with your human eyes, but by George, it's real, and it's out there. And you as a mom or a dad or a grandma or a grandpa need to know how to fight it. And you don't need to fight it just one time a day or one time a week or once a month when it comes to your brain. You need to be on your knees every single day fighting it and pushing it back to hell where it belongs with the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to read this verse to you. I want you to go in your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 6, okay? And we're going to read verses 10 through 13. 
or I'm sorry, verses 1 through 9. It says, These are the commands, decrees, and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess, so that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you, and so that you may enjoy long life. Hear, O Israel, and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your fathers, promised you. He's talking to the Israelites, but this goes with us as Christians as well. And he's also referring to the commandments, okay? So if you know the commandments, this is a part of what he's, what he's speaking about in Deuteronomy. Verse 4 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. And verse 6 says, These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Do you get that? This is supposed to be on your hearts all the time. Not when you feel like it, not when you don't feel like it. But this is something that we're supposed to have on our hearts, okay? And it says, impress them upon your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. What he's saying here is you need to tell your kids and yourself as much as you go and you play sports or you're playing video games or they're doing this and doing that. If you are not talking to them about God and God's laws and what God wants, then you are missing it big time. Now here's the other part that I want you to understand. Go back to Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 13. If you are not praying for your kids, if you are not doing warfare for them, if you are not talking to them about the reality of Christ and God, this is what's going to happen. And it's what we've seen happen day in and day out from the beginning. Ephesians 6, 10 through 13. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. These kids are constantly inundated with the devil's schemes. Day in, day out, point blank. For our struggle, for our struggle, for their struggle, is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. If you don't believe that there's a hell, if you don't believe that there's demons and Satan and demonic forces and demonic principalities, it says it right here in Ephesians chapter 6. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. The kid that comes home and says, Mom, I think I'm transgender. Mom, I think I'm gay. I think I'm a lesbian. I think I'm uh, going to be a mean person for the rest of my life. Where did that come from? Where did it come from? It comes in their mind. And that stuff is where I'm getting at. Satan puts this junk in their minds and in their hearts and they believe it because nobody else tells them that it's full of baloney and it's our jobs to pray against it and to teach them that it's a bunch of baloney. <clears throat> For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Evil is everywhere. Everywhere. 
And as moms and dads and believers in Jesus, if you are not praying for these kids on a daily basis, regularly, and doing battle for them, you're not helping them. And if you're not talking to them about this stuff because you don't know, then by George, get off your rear end, open up the word, and ask God to reveal it to you. Help him. Have him help you show you what is going on. And he certainly will. But you got to get serious about it. And you got to understand that part of this is our fault. Because as Christians, we haven't done the job. We haven't set up and said, listen, I'm not going to put up with this anymore. I love these kids. I love my kids. And I love your kids. And I may not even know you. But I care about the kids of this world. And they deserve to know that Jesus is real. That Satan is real. And that God kicked Satan's rear end. And he has no authority over them. And all he wants to do is lie to them and destroy them. Not on my watch. It's not going to happen. And I'm praying that you will feel the same way and take it as serious as I am. And I'm not saying I'm perfect because I'm not. I mess up every day. But I'm getting sick and tired of the filth that I keep hearing that these kids are coming in and telling me about. And it makes me mad in a righteous way. And it should you too. <sighs> Lord, I love you. And I'm being obedient. I'm doing what you told me to do. My prayer is that you take this and let it be heard where it needs to be heard. And the people's hearts that need to be changed will be changed in the name of Jesus Christ. And right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, Satan, I rebuke you. You go back to hell in your bondage area that you're supposed to be in. And you get bonded right back up. And you stay there. And you don't come out. You leave these kids alone. They belong to God. And I am declaring it and proclaiming it right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, you're probably saying, Sarah, how do I do this? How do I pray for my kids? How do I do this battle and warfare for my kids? It's easy. You know how I'm aggravated, ticked off? Well, when I pray for my boys, I specifically say, in the name of Jesus Christ, Protect them physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and financially. Lord, I pray, and I go back to Deuteronomy and that scripture that says, Lord, it's verse 5. I say, Lord, excuse me, in the name of Jesus, I pray that Isaac will love the Lord your God with all of his heart, with all of his strength, with all of his soul, and with all of his might, and to love his neighbor as himself. I pray that scripture over them daily. And then I pray that God will help them to understand the word. That God will help them to see the truth and believe the truth of God's word. And then I also tell Satan flat out, in the name of Jesus Christ, you leave my boys alone. You don't mess with them mentally. You don't touch them. You don't get anywhere near them in the name of Jesus. And I just tell him like it is. And I'm like, those are my boys. That's my husband. That's my church. That's my pastor. That's my friend. And I rebuke him in the name of Jesus Christ. Like I would be talking to somebody standing right here in front of me. And that's how I do it. And that's what you need to do. You need to get down to business and tell Satan where to go in the name of Jesus Christ. Period. That's the way to do it.